Hi, John with eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at eTrailer's Class 3 receiver hitch that we installed on our 2020 Lincoln Aviator. So we can take a closer look at the e-trailer hitch here. This is going to be powder coated, a flat black finish. Um, if you prefer a gloss finish, we have other hitches here available. Um, this is going to be a two inch by two inch reinforced collar. Uh, that's going to be a class three, and that's kind of the industry standard. Um, as far as far as the chain hangers here, this is going to be a wire loop type, and these are great for your standard S hook and there's always plenty of room if you have a heavier duty clevis style. So this is uh, a great option, I think, on these. As far as the pin and clip, uh, keep in mind, this is just gonna be the hitch itself. If you need a pin and clip for, say, a ball mount, uh, this is gonna take a 5 8 inch pin and clip. We got these here at E-Trailer. If you need a little bit more security, we have a locking type that will fit in here as well. All right, it's windy out here today, so we're going to make this quick. We're going to see how the e-trailer hitch fits on our Lincoln Aviator. Uh, we'll, start, we'll start with some ground clearance. We'll go from the ground up to the top of the inside collar, and we're looking at 15 and a quarter inches. The other measurement we like to get is going to be from the center of the pinhole out to the edge of our rear fascia back here. And we're looking at three and a half inches. Now these measurements are important if you're looking at accessories such as a ball mount. Um, you may want to get one with a rise to it or if you have accessories like a cargo carrier or a bike rack that have a stowed position like when they fold up uh, and you want to make sure that they are not going to impact the back of your fascia. So let's talk about some uh, weight ratings on this hitch. Uh, if you're looking for the tongue weight rating, which is going to be important for bike racks and cargo carriers and even towing, looking at 600 pound tongue weight rating, that's going to be up there. That's some of the, some of the bigger numbers here. And as far as towing uh, with the Lincoln, we're looking at a 6,000 pound rating with this e-trailer hitch. Now that's going to be the weight of your trailer plus anything that you put in it or on it. You want to check with the owner's manual of your Lincoln to make sure uh, how much you can actually tow with it. Now, as far as installation of this hitch on the Lincoln, um, this one gave us some trouble. Uh, you don't have to remove the rear face or anything. All the work that you're doing is actually going to be underneath of it. Um, but we have two heat shields we had to contend with and cut. The hitch is heavy, so you definitely want to get some friends, uh, have them come over for the afternoon to help you get it on. There's no, there's no drilling, but there is cutting down here. Uh, on the rear fascia and we'll show you how to do that as well. So if you uh, think that you want to see what it takes to get this installed, stick around, we'll show you. Okay, so to begin our installation, uh, if you have an underbody panel like we do today, we need to get this out of the way. We'll just start in the back. There's going to be a multitude of 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, uh, and some plastic push-pull fasteners. We'll start in the back with a 7 millimeter. We're going to have, looks like four that we need to remove. Now down the side, switch over to a 10 millimeter. And these are gonna be on both sides here. You're gonna have some flange nuts that have a washer attached to them. like two on this side, you'll have two on the other side as well. And finally, up here in the front, you're gonna have two push pin fasteners. Let's see, I've got just a pick here. Should be able to pull the center out and then you could pull out the outer portion of it. This one's giving me some problems, so a little gap right here. There we go. So we'll pop this out, and we should be able to remove the panel now. And we'll set this off to the side. Now we're going to need to lower the exhaust uh, to give us room to work, so I've got a tie-down strap, and I'm going to hook up at the rear sway link here on either side. And we'll just pull it tight to give us a little bit of room. Now, at either muffler, we're going to have a 10 millimeter uh, fastener up here that's holding on the isolator. 
So back here, we're gonna take the entire isolator down. So pull that out. Now it's gonna be the same process over here on the driver's side. And same deal, we'll just kind of lift the exhaust and bring that fastener down. Now we're gonna have two more rubber isolators right underneath the car. And we're gonna get these loose. If you got some soapy water, that's gonna help a lot. You can spray these down with soapy water. I'm gonna use a silicone spray. The more lubricants you can get on and inside of this, the easier these things are going to be to remove. So if you work it back and forth with either the soapy water or the silicone, a lot of the times these will come off just by hand, but some of them get stubborn as they get older as well. Um, and so you can always just use a pry bar. Now you can see the exhaust is resting on our tie down strap. We can lower that down a little bit and that's going to give us room to work underneath. Next, we need to remove both heat shields on the car. Now, you're gonna have uh, two 10 millimeter uh, washer nuts again at the top. You're also gonna have a seven millimeter over here on the side, so we'll start over here. And then to the 10 millimeters. like we have this one we're gonna have one more up here by the airbag on the back now this is gonna be held up by some studs uh, we should be able to just kind of pry them down This is the passenger side, do the same thing for the driver's side. Now there'll be a diagram in your instructions on how to trim out your heat shields. I've already done this one here, uh, and I'll tell you, it's just not fun. It's, uh, this is very difficult to do. Um, I was able to use tin snips to cut um, this longer cut in it, and for this, I just ended up using an inch and a half hole saw instead of trying to do a square like they said. Um, we're going to be able to access a port on the frame for this, and this is going to allow room for our new hitch. So we can put this up into position on the car. So the rounded curve edge will go towards the backside here. We'll flip this up. up the studs and now you can see the reasoning behind the trimming here this is going to be flush with the edge of the frame here and then this hole we can now access because this is where the, the hitch is going to bolt up so we can take the fasteners and resecure our heat shield Now grab a 21 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove uh, the bumper bolt that's here on the bottom on both sides. These are gonna be on here pretty good, so. Now your kit is going to include uh, new plastic rivets for this next step. You can do this one of two ways. Um, if you have a rear kick sensor like we do, you're going to have the kick sensor wire that runs along the back back here, and it's gonna be caged inside of a plastic housing. Uh, the kit includes plastic rivets, and what you would do is drill out one, two, three, and four. 
Um, and what that's going to do is release the inner plastic piece on this inside. You could lift up and pull the wire out of the way. Um, that's perfectly fine if you want to do that and if you have a plastic rivet gun. A lot of people don't. So the other way around this is we're using the measurements that are in the directions for cutting uh, into our rear fascia here to allow for the hitch. We know that there's a sensor wire here, so we're going to be very careful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a drill bit and we're going to drill at the corners, which is what we would want to do anyway um, in this plastic. That'll keep it from splitting in the future. So we want a round hole, but this is also going to give us a good visual when we're making our cut so that we're very careful not to drill into the sensor wire or cut into the sensor wire. I'll get this next one in. I'm going to leave the drill bit in and we'll get an inside shot so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's the drill bit of the hole I just drilled. This is the sensor wire that I'm talking about. And you can see we're close. Um, so you want to be careful when you're cutting this out. So I'm going to remove the drill bit and we're going to use an oscillating tool and we're going to trim this out. Now we have our measurements and I've used the tape to uh, mark off the lines that I need to follow here. Now we can get some of the hardware up into the frame. You're going to have a carriage bolt, a spacer block, and then a fish wire. And we'll start by putting the coiled end into this hole here. We're going to feed it up and we'll grab it in this larger hole up in the front. Our hardware will fit in right here. And so just put the spacer block on and then thread the carriage bolt. onto the spring and then shove the spacer block up into the frame and then the carriage bolt and then feed that down. Leave the wire on and for the front hole you're going to take the same hardware except for this we'll put the spacer block on again and thread the carriage bolt on. Stick the carriage bolt up in the hole and then the spacer block and then just bring it back down. Now you want to do this on both sides before we lift the hitch up. You're definitely going to want some help with this next step, uh, raising the hitch up into place. Now you need to feed the fish wires through the holes And then once you do that, it's going to be kind of a, a maze to get this up here. You need to bend the fascia back. And then feed it up through the cuts in the heat shield. So we definitely had some problems getting this up here. Uh, we had to trim the heat shield more than was in the directions. Uh, we were hitting this. So um, definitely leave yourself more room for the side to side on this hitch. Once you have the main bolt in, you may have to tighten that up a bit just to get uh, this back side because I noticed that we're kind of at a slant here so I'm going to try tightening up. This middle one as well. It's probably going to give us what we need here so we can unthread the fish wire. I'm going to take a pick and put some side pressure on this bolt so we can get this flange nut started. All right. So we're going to snug this up on both sides and then we can torque it uh, to the spec that we're going to find in the installation manual. Now with everything torqued to the specs, 
Uh, it really is just a matter of uh, reinstalling everything that we loosened up, like the exhaust and the center panels. And that was a look at the installation and some of the features of E-Trailer's Class 3 receiver hitch on our 2020 Lincoln Aviator.